Zimbabwe, a landlocked country located in the Southern Africa, is a progressively developing country, richly endowed with fertile lands and a great deck of minerals, where agriculture forms the base of our economy. Our hope lies in our land. With a 91.1% literacy rate, the highest in the sub-Saharan Africa, and a vibrant education system, which makes human capital our most treasured resource. Sadly, education does not translate to employment. Only 11% of Zimbabwe's economically active people are formally employed, leaving an estimated 84% as informally employed, most scratching out a living as vendors and traders and 5% are unemployed. The people of Zimbabwe struggle to stay afloat as we are overwhelmed by these economic difficulties. High rates of unemployment, imbalance of trade, financial constraints, and erratic pockets are amongst our greatest challenges. We have the human capital. We have the resources to exploit. The greatest solution lies in the mobilizers, the entrepreneurs, the ones that are willing to make a difference. Our enactors team endeavor during the past year to work with the average Zimbabwean and equip them with the drive to use resources available to them to earn a living with dignity. We strived to instill in our communities the need to seize entrepreneurship and leave a legacy and find homegrown solutions to a general problem being faced by all Zimbabweans, unemployment. This year, our Enactus team formulated our own original model, which we used as a tool to execute our actions. We named it the 3D model, as it consists of three stages, to distinguish, to develop, and to deploy. We present two of the three projects we did in our Enactus year, Stella Commune and Cotre. My name is Leighton Gabida. I'm Caroline Ungwe. Petronella Mnakandafa is my name. My name is Odias Chibaya. In 2015, we encountered with Campion Mutarisi, an avid entrepreneur who owned a coal farming business. Our needs assessment revealed that a coal is a small, nutritious bed that is fast growing with a maturity of six weeks and a fast egg laying rate. His business had a potential for growth, but there was great need to restructure. And so we came up with our first project, Cotre, creating opportunities through rebuilding enterprises. Guided by our 3D model, we carried out our first stage to distinguish by undertaking a needs assessment. We identified that the company had expertise in coal farming, training, and had potential for growth. However, it had a chaotic administration, high operational costs, lack of manpower, and dormant opportunities within the value chain of its industry. In order to reduce high <coughs> operational costs, Enactus CUT came up with a solution to eliminate the need to import incubators. We converted decommissioned refrigerators into incubators. The team sourced for decommissioned refrigerators from a local beverage distributor who ensure that there are no R11 and R12 CFC gases. We retrofitted the refrigeration system to produce heat and moisture by replacing the cooling system and a water boiler. We replaced the shelves with egg trays, a tanning system, and a monitoring and regulation system. And to cater for the erratic power cuts, we incorporated solar and gas as alternative sources of energy. Cocoa may saved up to $4,750 that was being consumed by importing incubators. To date, five incubators with a carrying capacity of 6,000 eggs and an 80% hatch rate have been produced at a cost of $150 each. Cocoa, together with the Nectar's Cut, toured the country taking people through a series of workshops on quail farming, basic bookkeeping, and marketing. Seeing how many participants wanted to venture into quail farming, but did not have the financial resources to do so, we came up with a financial system that would allow Cocom to supply weak old chicks and beds its clients on credit, then buy back the matured peasant eggs. In implementing this, we engaged a key partner, Safe Credit Microfinance, to provide the order finance facility. Currently, Quelcom has sold on credit 1,200 worth of beds and eggs and has realized a profit of $465. And through its partnership with the Coal Storage Commission within Zimbabwe, the beds have been slotted and distributed to their retailers. From the workshops conducted, 20 participants started coal breeding businesses, which created 38 jobs that are now utilizing Qualcomm's hatchery and breeding services. The company further diversified its operations to include pen making, this has enabled them to be less dependent on one field 
but rather benefit from other services they can offer to others. Using a world ranking too, we realize that there's an increase in revenue from $10,200 to $15,675. There's an increase in profits to from $1,750 to $7,922. There's an increase in assets to two locally manufactured incubators, two vehicles to assist in, in distribution, and the employment of four additional workers to assist in operations. We realize that to date, the 20 businesses that Cocoa was mentoring have recorded an average profit of $5,000 since they were established. And Qualcomm continues to oversee the smooth running of these newly established businesses. Companies utilize the opportunity in his industry's value chain. He can now spend more quality time with his family. Qualcomm has also assisted other entrepreneurs by mentoring them to start their own small quail farming businesses. In Zimbabwe, an average of 6,000 kgs worth of decommissioned refrigerators are recorded at landfills quarterly, adding up to a global estimate of 6 billion kgs, also releasing greenhouse gases. Through the company, five refrigerators have been converted into incubators, thus a 650 kgs of diverted landfill. Indeed, through Qualcomm, Campion has seized entrepreneurship and has created business opportunities for other entrepreneurs. My name is Shim Shodawa. Ever since I started working for Qualcomm, I've been earning a decent living to support my siblings. I am Mrs. Warikandwa, and I breed quail birds. From this project, I earn a decent income to feed and send my grandchildren to school. I am a quail breeder, assisted by Qualcomm. The project has helped me earn a good income to support my family. When we met Campion, he was a stressed man with an enterprise that had high operational costs underutilized opportunities, a chaotic administration, and lack of manpower. But through the incubators that we designed, he was able to lower his operational costs. And through the systems that we introduced to him, he was able to put his administration in order, employ four people, and applied entrepreneurial action to create 20 businesses, which in turn created 38 jobs. The second community that we worked I... with, the second community that we worked with, is the Wachikoko community. Located in the rural area of Mondoro, an area richly endowed with fertile lands that support horticulture, every household has an average of 16 fruit trees, predominantly guava trees. In 2014, some of the individual households in the community decided to exploit their produce and sold guavas worth 7,400 on credit to a local company. However, Due to prevailing economic conditions, the debt was not serviced. And because the community did not have any legal support, they failed to recover a single cent. Let us hear what Mr. Wachkoka has to say about this. My name is Regis Wachkoka, and I lead the Wachkoka Fruit and Vegetables Cooperative. Before the Inectus team came, we used to sell our guavas as individuals to fruit processing companies. Inectus encouraged us to start selling our guavas as a group. This was a good idea because in past experiences selling as individuals, we lost about $7,400 to untrustworthy companies. This created a lot of challenges for us because now we couldn't pay school fees for our children. Because of this experience, the community lost hope and returned to subsistence farming. Our Inectus Cut Team saw an opportunity to help this community resuscitate this venture and expand on their efforts. Guided by our model, we carried out our first stage to distinguish the We Needs Assessment by consulting six of the community elders and then a group session with 30 community members and finally a door-to-door -door follow up and seven households. We noted that because their basic household income was $23 per month, they were struggling to send their children to school and could barely afford more than a meal a day. The community also had resources they wished to exploit profitably, but they had an unwillingness to trust outside stakeholders. A series of workshops and interactive sessions were held with 87 participants to restore unity of purpose, to give confidence and to impart business knowledge. The involvement of the community allowed them to air out their grievances. Inactus Cart, together with the community, came up with a solution to create a company that would spearhead as a trading partner.
The Wajikoka Fruit and Vegetable Supplies Private Limited Company was formed and registered. And our training sessions assisted them to come up with their own strategic plans, including a business plan and a marketing plan. A company representative council was formed, made up of village elders and two enactus members to superintend the formation of other operational structures like production and marketing. The CRC mitigated all insecurities of trading at a household level and allowed the community to focus on productivity. The company representative council also addressed the issue of risk transference. Previously, the Wachikoka community was underpaid due to guavas being damaged during transportation. This underpayment was illegal because as governed by the common law of Zimbabwe, risk is passed to the buyer at the conclusion of any sales contract. Therefore, a clause was added in the contract to transfer risk to the buyer from the moment the fruits were deployed on the trucks. The CRC clearly defined the market segment. To determine the right market for the fruits, the guavas were graded and the bulk of the fruits were for grade B. This is appropriate for processing. The remaining produce was packaged and distributed to fresh produce markets and vendors within and outside the community. We then approached the best fruit processing companies with the graded produce. This is when a fruitful relationship between these two companies was established. This relationship resulted in the negotiations of prices and contracts, enhanced the quality controls and ease of trade. To increase production capacity, the company engaged with the council of the Wachikoka Ward to source for additional land to set up a fruit tree plantation. The company was granted 15 hectares of land on a trial basis to roll out this program, and an additional five hectares to build a small plant as they are interested in diversifying into value addition. This project is being undertaken with the assistance of our university, the Chinoy University of Technology. The company has also ensured a constant income by selling vegetables, lemons, and nuts when guavas are off season. Since the inception of the project, the company harvested 151 tons of guavas, generating a revenue of $10,500 and an additional $8,200 from the sale of other fruits and vegetables, totaling a revenue of $18,700. Comparing with the information from the needs assessment, the 180 directly impacted families that used to make an average household income of $23 per month are now making $116.50 a 406% increase. As a direct result, these families are now able to afford basic household costs, such as school fees and three meals a day. In our post-assessment, we noted that the community societal well-being has improved, and they now saw opportunities from their environment. Also, the Enectus team noticed high levels of confidence reflected when the CRC negotiated for their own contracts. Youths are now contributing positively by taking up other tasks within the company. The producers of the Wachikoka community had always been exploited because they lacked a basic knowledge of their common law rights. Through our intervention, they now operate under contracts which protect them and they now own a registered entity. We've continued to empower the community to continue to reinvest in their land by planting more trees and utilizing the rotten food for composting as it is important for their market gardening. Before our intervention, the households of Wachikoka were earning an average $23 per month, which made it difficult for them to send their children to school and barely afford more than a meal a day. After gaining their trust and assisting them to form their own company that trades in fruits and vegetables, these families now use entrepreneurial action to trade together, earning an average $116.50, enough for school fees for a year and three meals a day. Because of the Enectus team from Chino University, they have helped us very well with our project and now our produce is bringing in good and decent income. When the Enectus team came to assist, things took a turn for the better and now we can afford to feed our families and send kids to school. Now when we sell our guava produce, companies pay on time. We can now pay school fees and send our kids to school. Feeding our families has also become so easy. Our project is running in a three-year phase. This year, we've begun expanding operations to surrounding villages. We estimate that this will double production output and leveraging on our partnership with Zimtrade, we intend to export some of our produce, 
increasing our revenue to over 47,000 and directly impacting an additional 120 families. The returns from this year will be channeled towards the construction of a processing plant in our third year. We are going to replicate this model to similar communities in Zimbabwe in partnership with ZimTrade, starting with Honda Valley, where there's an estimated $4.5 million worth of bananas. In our motive to change the world in the best way that we could, Stella Commune and Cotre address some of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. With a combined revenue of over $35,000, direct impact of 184, and indirect impact of 3,928, we helped in the fight against extreme poverty in all its forms. In promoting sustainable agriculture through Stella Commune, we managed to protect, promote, and restore life on land in our effort to end hunger. With families in Mondoro Washikoka now able to pay school fees for their children, we created learning opportunities for quality education. The company representative council of the Wachikoka community empowered six women to make public decisions. This is our push for gender equality. Qualcomm and the 20 ventures it empowered have created decent work and economic growth for 42 individuals to support their families. In converting decommissioned refrigerators into incubators, we played our part in applying technology towards innovation and the fight against climate change. With 12,785 invested hours, this was our own way of doing small things in a great way. 2016 was our sole year to, to seize, seize entrepreneurship and live a legacy. In uh, your annual report, it is mentioned that uh, 6,154 hours were invested in order to directly impact uh, four uh, people. Now I understand that there's a great impact, but uh, do you have plans or how do you foresee to make efficiency gains so that the number of hours required in order to impact people could become maybe a little lower? Thank you for the question, sir. Um, as a team, we're looking forward to, in the following year, um, increasing the number of students um, that are going to be part of the team. Um, this way we can also be able to ration the number of people who work on each project so that we can become more efficient. Um, I'm not sure if I missed this. So on your um, couture project, I wonder, do you have any professional to help you um, to identify if the recycled refrigerator meet the safety standard to reuse? Um, thank you for the question, Dan. Um, when we were working on the project, um, we were getting our refrigerators from a local beverage distributor. Um, when they get rid of their, when they decommission their refrigerators, they actually follow the standard towards it. So when we collect them, they've already gone through the process. And, and to add on what he's saying, uh, we also have experts from our School of Engineering who are helping within this project to ensure that uh, from what they know about incubators and what they know from global warming issues like that, they can be made possible for our environment. Yes, and uh, uh, Stella Communities Project, it seemed to me that uh, there were a number of issues with uh, program participants not understanding legal rights and common law. What have you built into the program to ensure that doesn't happen in the future? Thank you for that question. We have uh, empowered the community through educating them on the common law rights because they did not have prior knowledge to the common law rights in Zimbabwe. We have also uh, initiated for them to start signing contracts because prior to our intervention, they were not signing contracts, it was just verbal agreement, so it was easy for them to be exploited. So we have made sure that they sign contracts after every transaction, and we have educated them about the laws of Zimbabwe, consumer rights and everything. Thank you. Great presentation. Um, I'm curious if you have any plans to provide any financial literacy 
education for the households that go from making $23 a month to essentially $120 a month. That's a pretty large increase. So I'm wondering if you're planning on teaching them how to manage their money wisely. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question, ma'am. Uh, we're already holding training sessions for them so that they can learn to save their money, learn how to spend it very well, learn how to ration it so that they can afford to send their children to school and that they can also save on those little things that are very important to them without for them for that money to be able to sustain them. Hi, over here. Uh, incredible work. On your business plan, you spent a total of about $8,000 uh, to deliver all of this the, the, on the two projects in about 10,000, 11,000 hours. My question is, um, for your future plans that you, that you talked about, how will that be financed? Um, thank you for the question, sir. Um, for our future plans, we're working um, on getting a couple of grants. Um, there were opportunities that were revealed to us um, quite recently um, within the country and some people who had approached us. So we are working on those grants to finance those plans. Congratulations on a wonderful presentation and an awesome projects. Um, the question again back to those refrigerators. As I look at these projects and the opportunity to hand them off from the Enactus team to be able to have these people in villages sustain themselves. Um, how do they learn the expertise to recycle these refrigerators, first get them, recycle them, 